On April 25, 1977, a Japanese fishing boat named Ziyomaru was fishing in the Pacific Ocean near New Zealand. At 10.40 in the morning, they began pulling in the nets, which were unusually heavy this time. The control panel displayed a weight of two tons, making everyone think they were about to strike it rich. However, to their surprise, when the fishing net emerged from the water, there were only a few fish inside, but lying horizontally was the body of a huge unknown creature. Curious crew members approached to take a closer look. The creature had a strange appearance, with a small head, long neck, and large belly. On both sides, it had prominent pectoral fins resembling those of a seal, but its size was exceptionally large. The red and white flesh and fat were highly decomposed. The corpse continuously dripped a nauseating stench onto the deck. Nobody on the ship had any idea what this thing was. Even the seasoned sailors among them had never seen anything like it before. At that moment, everyone on board was completely puzzled. After a while, Captain Akira Tanaka arrived upon hearing the commotion and saw the crew members chattering away. He angrily shouted, Get back to work, you idiots! What are you planning to do with such a foul-smelling thing? Stew it for soup? Quickly dispose of it, you bunch of imbeciles! After being scolded, the crew members dispersed and immediately returned to their workstations. Just as the unidentified corpse was about to be thrown back into the sea, a crew member named Michihiko Yano took out his camera from his bag and snapped a few shots of the creature-like thing. These five precious monster photos were captured. In addition, he used a knife to cut 42 pieces of keratin fiber from the monster's fins as samples. He also drew a rough sketch of the creature based on his memory during the return journey. As shown in the picture, we can roughly determine that the monster had a total length of 10 meters, with the head and neck measuring 2 meters, the tail 2 meters, and the torso 6 meters. Its weight was approximately 2 tons. Two months later, Michihiko Yano returned to Japan and immediately sent the monster samples to the Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology for testing. He also mailed the photos to a newspaper. The news of a giant monster discovered by a Japanese fishing boat overseas spread like wildfire, causing a huge sensation across the country within a few days. At that time, there was a craze for monsters in Japan. Ultraman, which was born in 1966, featured various bizarre monsters, satisfying people's curiosity. However, those were all fictional. Therefore, when the media announced the first real-world discovery of a monster in Japan, people were extremely excited and gave it a name, Shinnessi. Since the name was similar, many people naturally assumed that the water creature discovered by the Japanese was also a prehistoric creature, a plesiosaur. Although the ugly creature in the photos did not have the long neck of the plesiosaur, it was speculated that after millions of years, descendants of the same ancestor had evolved differently. However, just when a group of Japanese scholars was engaged in heated debates over the few photos. On July 25, 1977, the test results for the monster sample delivered by Michihiko Yano to the university finally came out. Based on the comparison of various amino acid values from the sample, it was highly likely that it belonged to a distant relative of sharks, known as a basking shark. As soon as this information was revealed, the various factions that had been in opposition— such as the plesiosaur faction, monster faction, mutant faction, extraterrestrial faction, and so on, who had been at odds with each other suddenly stopped arguing. They collectively opposed the conclusion that it was a basking shark. People believed that the crew members of the Ziyomaru, who spent years fishing at sea, had encountered numerous strange marine creatures. If it truly was a basking shark, wouldn't they be able to recognize it? The test result was difficult for both experts and the general public in Japan at that time to accept. Due to the heightened atmosphere created by the media, the National Museum of Nature and Science even issued a commemorative stamp set featuring the plesiosaur. The Japanese government invested a significant amount of money in sending dozens of fishing boats back to the original location for salvage operations. The whole world was watching this sea monster in Japan. However, the conclusion that it was merely a basking shark based on a few small samples was hard for people to accept. The opposition to the notion of the monster being a basking shark at that time was mainly based on the following points. Firstly, when the monster was brought up from the water, although the body was highly decomposed, 
It was clearly visible that the bones were surrounded by red and white decomposed flesh and fat. As a relative of sharks, basking sharks mainly store their fat internally, which contradicts what is shown in the photos. Secondly, based on the sketch drawn by Michihiko Yano, the monster had a long neck and square-shaped vertebrae. However, when we look at the photos of basking sharks, they hardly have a neck, and their vertebrae are similar to other sharks. Thirdly, from the photos taken at the scene, the upper body of the monster had two large pectoral fins but no dorsal fin, which differs from the typical image of a basking shark that we are familiar with. In July 1978, the Franco-Japanese Oceanographic Society released a report on the Zuyomaru Sea Monster. In response to the aforementioned three points of contention, the report provided the following explanations. Firstly, Michihiko Yeno had previously stated that the sketch of the monster was not drawn based on direct observation at the scene but rather hastily from his memory afterward. The monster's body was covered with a thick layer of fat. Therefore, Yeno did not personally witness the exact number and shape of the bones. His estimation was made by stepping on the monster's body and using his feet to gauge. Furthermore, Yano's sketch was amateurish, with proportions completely off. The six-meter measurement was depicted as the same length as the two-meter measurement, rendering it of little reference value. Secondly, at the salvage site of the monster, five photographs were taken, and the media particularly favored the side-view photo because it appeared more like a plesiosaur, which was suitable for marketing purposes. However, based on another photo taken from behind, it is evident that the monster does indeed have a dorsal fin. We have never found any evidence of dorsal fin-like structures in the fossils of plesiosaurs. Therefore, even if the specimen is not a basking shark, it definitely cannot be a plesiosaur. Thirdly, while most fish and sharks have very little fat in their bodies, the situation is quite the opposite for basking sharks. The image we are currently looking at is from the official website of the Faculty of Marine Science at the University of Tokyo, and we can clearly see that beneath its dark skin, the basking shark is almost entirely covered in snow-white fat. Therefore, based on the aforementioned points, it is highly likely that the monster carcass brought up by the Zeomaru is indeed a basking shark commonly encountered by fishermen. Although basking sharks have a large body size and a menacing appearance when they open their mouths, their aggression is not strong. They are filter-feeding animals that primarily feed on planktonic invertebrates, small fish, or fish eggs. Their lower jaw muscles are lax, and their skeletal structure is loosely connected. Once they start to decompose after death, the lower jaw is often the first to detach, giving the appearance of a connected neck vertebra, resembling that of a plesiosaur. On November 13, 1977, the Japanese newspaper Asahi Shimbun published an article. An anatomist named Takatsu Sakuji dissected the lower jaw and gills of a deceased basking shark and replicated a photograph of the Zeomaru sea monster. Upon comparison, the results were clearly evident.